Okay, so we will be getting started. Today we will go over ratios and proportions and the relation and other related subjects. So ratios. So what a ratio essentially is, is a comparison of the quantity of something. So if there are three cats to a dog, this is a ratio. There are three cats for every dog. For every dog, there are three cats, etc. This can be written like three over one in fraction three colon one. One, or I could be said to say like three cats for every dog. So when we have this ratio, we don't actually know the quantity of either a cat or a dog. However, if we were to say there are X cats and Y dogs variables, then we could say X divided by Y equals three, which is the essential equation which ratios are built on. Where it's more like the ratio has this equation. But x divided by y equals 3. Hey, Sorry, what? So if we had three cats for four dogs and there were there's clearly four dogs, so there is a ratio here. For every three cats there are four dogs. So let's say we had 84 animals in total. So what we have here is say, with our ratio, we have X, where X is the cat over Y equals three, four. Now, since we have 84 animals, we can see that x, the number of cats, plus y, the number of dogs, equals 84. Now, since we have this equation, we can do a multiple of y, x equals 3, 4, y, and then substitute this into this equation for 7, 4, y equals 84 if and then y would equal 48 so there are 48 dogs and henceforth 36 cats Now that we have, if there are 36 cats, I should say something different like apples. And the ratio of apples to bananas is one, two, three. One apple for every three bananas. How many bananas are there?
Yes, that is correct. There's 108 cents. X apples over Y bananas equals 36. Uh, not 36. 1 over 3. And X is 36. So if you switch this around, 108 equals Y, which is the number of bananas. What we could also do with which is this have multiple things, multiple, more than two objects in ratio with each other. So let's say we have two cats and three dogs with five mice. And so there's two cats for every three dogs or five mice, and there are three dogs for every five mice. This is a ratio with three quantities. So if we had, say, six dogs, we could use this section to find how many cats, or this ratio, three to five, three dogs for every five mice to find how many mice. So it's the same, same concept as is the previous, but with three instead. So let's say we had six dogs, then the dogs to mice ratio is three to five. So dogs D over M equals three, five. And since D is six, you can calculate that M, there are 10 mice. And this ratio with three quantities can be written as this with colons. So with this three colon, you can see that cat, dog, mice, two cat for every three dog, and also two cat for every five mice, and also three dog with every mice. So it's this three words here, but they match up. Okay, so using this ratio, except that there's 30 mice instead. So two cats for every three dogs or 30 mice. What's the ratio of cats to total animals? What's this ratio? Okay, so to find a ratio, you need to find well, well, cats over animals, which is C on top. And since animals is the sum of all these variables, C plus D plus M. Thus, If you were to ooh, ooh, write the equations for the ratios, D, C over D equals two thirds and C over M equals 15. So C equals 15 M, C equals two thirds. D 
or actually m equals one fifth. No, this is never mind. This in C equals M. So C over C plus three over two C plus 15 C. And you can cross C out as a common factor doing all this. So, and then multiply two to get rid of this fraction. So two over 20 is no, not 20. Two over. Thirty-five is the final ratio. Another way you could do it is just to add this up and then put the ratio coefficient of the cats. This part on the top. So two plus two plus three plus thirty is the same answer. Now say if we have two bananas for every, two apples for every three bananas. And five bananas for every seven oranges. Whereas if we have to find the ratio between apples and oranges. So first we should write our equation. So 2a for apples over 3b. No, a over b equals 2 thirds. And b over o equals 5 seven. And thus we want to find A over O. Well, we, what we can do is just multiply these two equations together to form A over B times B over O equals 10 over 21. Which is our apple to orange ratio. Um, another racial problem is this. So, what if we had to find the ratio of x to y? Actually, I'll ask this to you guys. What is the ratio of x to y with this equation? Thank you. 
Okay, so what we will have to do here first is multiply this equation by 13 minus 2y and 5 to get rid of the fraction. So 50x minus 50y with distributed property on this side, 9x minus 6y on this side, 11x equals 9y if we shift the like terms together. So divided by y to get x over y and x over y equals 9 over 11, which is our final answer. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, moving on. Conversion rates. So if you didn't know already, there's measurement units, one feet, centimeter. This is part of metric. This is imperial. Uh, you don't have to remember these. It's just what they are. And they have conversion rates since these units aren't the same. By the way, this is length. So the conversion rate of inches to centimeters is one inch over 3.28 centimeters. What this basically means is, first of all, there are 3.28 centimeters in an inch, and you can multiply this conversion rate as a fraction with any centimeter measurement. So 50 centimeters times one inch, 3.28 centimeters equals, I don't, equals some value I don't have a calculator. But but the, these two would be equal and I'll calculate. This is possible because this is equals one since one inch equals 3.2 centimeters. A few common conversion rates are 12 feet over one inch. Uh, 100 centimeters in a meter, etc., etc. And there are, no, this is inches. I will explain it again. So, 50 centimeters times one inch over 3.28 centimeters equals 15.24 inches because the, as you see, these two units cancel out since one are over power one while the others at the bottom of a fraction power negative one. 
And so you can get an inches. Also, the actual conversion rates different. I don't actually know what is. This should be two point five four. Regardless of the real world. Imperial or and metric conversions to convert something like feet into inches, you would first need the conversion factor of twenty. No, what? One feet over twelve inches. But you need to convert feet into inches. This is only used for one converting inches to feet. So you would need to flip this around. And then you multiply this by your feet, how many feet you have, so five feet. So these cancel out, so you get 60 inches in five feet. All right, so what if we were to say to convert feet to inches, like say seven feet, inches, and then to centimeters, this is. So first we need to establish the conversion factor. So there are 12 inches in a feet and 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So seven, feet times the conversion factor with feet on the bottom. One foot is 12 inches. And then the conversion factors of inches and centimeters with inches on the bottom and 2.54 centimeters on top is would give us our centimeters. How many centimeters are in seven feet? The final centimeters is 213.236 centimeters. Does anyone have any questions? I know I messed up a few parts along the way. If not, can you guys convert 12 yards into centimeters? So how many yard, how many centimeters are in 12 yards? Well, a yard is three feet, one feet is 12 inches, inch, is 2.54 centimeters. So how many centimeters are there in 12 yards? Also, you can notice that conversion factors are extremely related to ratios. 
since the basically ratios one inch in 2.54 centimeters. That's basically a ratio. Okay. So first we have 12 yards multiplied by three feet over one yard times one feet below 12 inches times inch over 2.54 cm. Yeah. And thus the final answer would be One zero nine seven point two eight centimeters in yards. Also, I really like people to participate, even if you are not sure of a, an answer. Okay. So percentages, so percent basically means per hundred. So 50%, this is the percent symbol, would equal 50 per 100 or where the fraction equals half or 0 0.5 if you want to use decimals or fractions. Though decimals are better used with percents. So when we say 50%, this is 50%. It's implied that it's 50% of one. So it's 50 over 100 times one. But what if we had say 60% of 50? Well, then we would do the, this ratio except with our 60 as the top times 50. So we can cancel these out and then we are left with 30. So 30 is 60% of 50. On the other hand, let's say we want you to find the word percent of 72 is of 360. First, we have to make a ratio 
and then we must make an equation. So if we say this is X percent, then 72 over 360 would equal X over 100. Now you can multiply this out with 100 and 360, but you will eventually get that X equals 20 or that 72 is 20% 20 of 360. Now that we have that, so let's say through 36. What number is 120% of 36? Also for a similar question, what number is 36, 120 percent of? Okay, so what number is 36, 120% of, which is this. Uh, so 36 over seven, some number X is 120% of it. So 120 over 100. Thus, you can multiply x here, multiply 100, and then you will eventually find that x would be 30. Now, if we do the top problem, what number is 120% of 36? So 36. X divided by 36, where X is our number, equals 120 over 100, which is, which if you calculate it, which is 43.2, which is whoever answered it, it, they were correct. So a good formula for this that one might use is A over B equals X over 100. A is X percent of B, though you shouldn't really rely on these formulas. But let's say let's say Ball has a bank account and he has interest rate five percent, which is pretty high actually, and he has two hundred dollars as of initial deposit. So he has two hundred dollars at the beginning. So if he collects interest on that his money raises by 5%. So how we would do this, 
So he gains 5% of what he initially had. So 200 times a whole plus 5%. Or you could use 200 times 100 over 100 plus the amount that's getting added with which is in this case five. So he'll eventually have $210 after an interest. However, let's say we had, so let's say we had $60 Priced uh, chair. So the chair costs sixty dollars. But what if the store gives a sale? So forty percent off. So now the price drops by sixty percent. Six drops by 40%. So the cost essentially loses 40% of itself. So 60 times one parentheses minus 40% or 60 times 100 minus X over 100 where X is the amount being cut off, which is 40 in this case. So if you do the math, it eventually comes down to $36 being the final price. An interesting thing about this is that if you were to say, if the store were to mark up the price by 40% after cutting it down, so plus 40%, so we use the same formula as before, it does This comes down to seven over five. And then eventually comes down to 50.4, which is less than the original price, although 40% was cut out and 40% was raised. Okay, moving on. Proportion. So when we say proportional, so let's say X and Y are proportional. That means if Y has an increase, then so does X. But So if X and Y are proportional, then X, Y equals K, where K is a constant. I'm using K as a variable here, although it's constant since K could be essentially anything. So if we had X over Y equals two, then if Y, increases by say times two, if y doubles, then so does x to maintain 
the fact that x over y equals two. So for example, if x and y equals, so they're proportional by, so x and y are proportional. If x equals nine and y equals 13, if y suddenly became 18, then x over y, as we can see, the proportion is 9 over 13 equals the new x over 18, which is the new y. A good equation for this is old x, old y equals new x over new y equals the proportion. So depending on what variables you're missing, you can always find, well, you can find what you don't have if you have enough variables. So old x over old y equals nine over 13 equals new x over 18. So new x, is 162 over 13. Now, uh, a real life proportions would be say shadow. So there's a sun. And, and say someone standing here, that's not a person. Uh, so they have a shadow and their height is proportional with the length of the shadow for reasons one would learn in geometry. So x height over y is always proportional. So if we had a building here, x1 and then a shadow with y1, then x over y equals x1 over y1. Since the length of one's height with the length of one's shadow is proportional. So let's say Bob, five feet tall, casts a shadow of 12 feet. And a building, 40 feet tall, casts a 40 feet tall. What is the length of the shadow the building casts? Okay, so far, using this equation, 5 over 12 equals 40 over y1. Thus, you can just do simplify this equation. And y1, the building shadow would be 96 feet. So similarly, inverse proportion. So what that means is as a basic idea, when y increases, x decreases and vice versa. More specifically, xy equals k, where k is a constant.
So if we had x equals 3, y equals 14, then no matter what x and y are, then their product would need to be 42 for them to remain inversely proportional. So if we had this state, so x equals three, y equals 14, if x and y were proportional and if x becomes seven, then we would have x, y equals k equals x one over y one and x one times y one where x one and y one are the new x and y. So we know that x1 is 7 because it's a new x. And we know 3 and y are 14. So 3 times 14 equals 7 new y. So then we can find out that new y would be 6. So old x times old y equals product equals new x times new y. So this is useful when we have a, a rate problem. So let's say, we're not necessarily weight problem, just weight kind of is weight, but so 12 people can clear a field in 18 hours. How many hours can nine people complete it? So assuming that each person's work is constant across all work hours, we can know that 12 people working the field and times 18 people, 18 hours spent would make, would make 216 work hours, where a work hour is how much one person works in an hour, so thus the amount of people and hours are inversely proportional. The less people you have, the longer it will take. But the more people you have, the shorter amount of time it takes to get done. So 12 people times 18 equals 216 equals nine people times the new amount of hours which is t. So then we can find that t would equal 24. It would take 24 hours for nine people to clear something or do something with. Moreover, if x and y are inversely proportional, and y and z are inversely proportional. Not k, m, not, not x, uh, b, p. Then if we divide x, y over y, z, x over z equal k over p. Since k and p are constants, we can mob them together into a C. This is obviously our proportional equation. So if X and Y and Y and Z are inversely proportional to each other, then X and Z will be directly proportional. Does anyone have any questions on anything we did? Today.
Okay, so joint proportion. This is proportion between more than in two quantities. So a good example of this is PV equals R and T, where N's a constant, so I'll just, you can ignore it. No, R is the constant. So you can ignore R, P for pressure, volume, number, temperature. So what we do with joint proportion is that we can hold one or more variables constant. So let's say N and T are constant. Thus PV equals a constant value. Since R, N and T are constants, then we can see that this is an inverse proportional. Uh, equation. So pressure and volume are inversely proportional. Furthermore, if we were to hold V and N constant, then P over T equals R N over V, which is a constant because all three of these are constants and thus P and T are directly proportional. Thus, we can, with by turning two of these variables into uh, constants, by setting them to constants, I should say, you can find the relationship between any two variables in this equation. To practice this, what's the relationship between volume and temperature, if pressure and N is held constant. So if we held V and N constant, so now I mean P and N constant, pressure and number constant, P over R N equals T over V. So we have a proportional relationship. So another example is if five chickens can lay 10 eggs in 20 days. So we have three quantities here, chickens, eggs, and days. So, So uh, let's say C, E, and T for time, then C times T. So first we need to get an equation started. So we need to first establish whether or not uh, um, a, each of the pairs are proportional or inversely proportional. So first, let's hold eggs constant. So then we have chickens and time. So let's say if we, you, you, hypothetically we have more chickens, 
So the number of eggs produced is constant. So there, but there are more chickens laying eggs. So now we have less time to produce the same number of eggs. Thus, since T decreases, when C increases, C and T are inversely proportional. Now, if we call time constant, so to establish the relationship between chickens and eggs. Now, let's say we had more chickens. The time remains the same. So if a chicken produces a constant number of eggs, then the eggs will obviously increase. So C and E are directly proportional with the same hypothesis. With the same method, you can find that E and T are proportional. So, how do we write an equation? So, first off, C and T are inversely proportional. So, CT equals K. Let's start off with that. Now, E is directly proportional with C and T. So now we can do C over E <laughs> below both C and T. You can see this works because C over E and T over E both exist when the other is held constant. Now, since five chickens lay 10 eggs in 20 days, we can substitute these values 100 over 10 to find that k is 10. Now, if we were to find, say, how many eggs are laid with 10 chickens in 25, day, in 25 days, then 10 times 25 over egg equals 10. So 25 eggs are produced. This, you can do this with any two variables known. So like 10 chickens, how long does it take to lay 25 eggs? 10 over 25 times t equals 10. t is 25. Does anyone have any questions? If not, that will be it for today. Okay, bye.